Good evening and welcome to worship here at St. Marcus Lutheran Church. It's time for our midweek Lenten worship. You know, in everybody's life, there comes a time when you can't come to church anymore. For all of us, that's happening right now. And so what the church does is we bring church to you. That's what we're hoping to do through our live streaming throughout the coronavirus crisis. I hope that you have a spirit of joy and peace even in the midst of troubling times. You know, the scripture says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. May you be living in that transcendent peace of God. Let us begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Thank you. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen and Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. Your sun will never set again and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your days of sorrow will end. On no day will the gates of the holy city ever be shut, for there will be no night there. Tonight's Passion reading comes to us from Matthew chapter 26, beginning with the 69th verse. Here we read of Peter disowning Christ. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you are one of them, for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, it is against the law to put this into the treasury since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That it is, that's why it has been called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the 30 silver coins, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. 
This is the Passion Reading. The six weeks of the church season that begins with Ash Wednesday and ends with Good Friday, that's Lent. And the color of Lent in our church is purple. I'm sure you've seen the purple stole that the pastor might be wearing or a purple paramount on the lectern or the pulpit. Maybe especially the purple robe that is draped across our cross in the, the chancel here in church. Only in Lent are you going to see purple in the church. Why is that? I'd like to reflect on a few words from Mark chapter 15 as we answer that question. Why is purple playing such a prominent part in our observance of Lent. How does purple preach a, a silent sermon from the sanctuary every time we gather together here and even when we're not able to gather together here? I want to give you a warning though. As I read these words from Mark chapter 15, they might cause you to get just a little bit angry. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium, and they called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and they spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and they put his own clothes on him and then they led him out to crucify him. During the time of our Lord's Passion, purple was the color of royalty. But those soldiers had no intention of honoring Jesus as any kind of a king. This is where the, the anger comes in, you know. This is where the righteous indignation 
just sort of wells up inside us. How dare they? How, how dare these soldiers treat our Jesus this way? How dare, their, how dare they be so cruel um, to any person, let alone the perfect, sinless Son of God? And, and how dare they treat Jesus in such a mocking way, as if, as if he's not a king, when in fact he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And how dare they mockingly worship him, only bending the knee to make fun of him. How dare they do something like that? It's hard to even read these words in our Bible. Purple is the color of royalty, but on that day, those soldiers, the prospect of, of, of accepting Jesus of Nazareth as a king was like a punchline to a cruel, bloody joke. And here was the problem. They didn't take him seriously. They just did not take Jesus seriously as a king. When he rode into Jerusalem and was acclaimed as a king on Palm Sunday, remember that? They didn't take it seriously. When he was answering Pilate's question of whether he was a king, he said, you're right. I am the king of the Jews, but they didn't take him seriously. They had no intention of honoring him as a king. And either, if he, I suppose if he was a king to them, he would either be the king of a loser nation or a loser religion. And either way, they weren't going to take him seriously. So what did they do? They made fun of him, they beat him, they spit on him, and they sent him off to die. And it's hard for us to even hear this. Just like it's, it's hard for us to hear the, uh, I guess, the 21st century version of this that's going on today. What happens when... Jesus is brought up in a college classroom or a boardroom or the marketplace or in the media. Typically, how are people going to think of King Jesus? Typically, how is a person who has simple childlike faith in King Jesus going to be portrayed? There's a lot of not taking Jesus seriously. More like mocking him, ridiculing him, denying his claims. Hail the king of nothing. And it's hard for us to hear that. But here's the hardest part of all. I have contributed to this mockery. You have contributed to not taking Jesus seriously because you and I have succumbed to that temptation to slide right into the very attitude of the world that we decry. Have we not heard our King Jesus say, for instance, let your light shine before people and too often we've allowed the the workroom and the boardroom and the classroom and maybe even our living room just be a dark place because we refuse to stand up and testify to Christ stand up and shine our Jesus light have we ever heard our King Jesus say, 
I tell you, whoever looks lustfully upon another person has already committed adultery with that person in their heart. And yet, we have laughed at lewd jokes. And we have looked with lust. What I'm saying is, we call him our king. But we don't always take his his kingly claim on our life seriously. This is where, friends, we have to embrace the other side of purple. Repentance. For centuries, purple has been the color of repentance in the church. And it is oh so appropriate that repentance is draping the cross in our chancel. For as King Jesus walks away to be crucified, as he he walks away from that mockery under the control of those soldiers, something beautiful is happening. He's redeeming us. He's taking away our sins. He's he's purchasing us to be his own. He's plucking us out of the burning building of our own sin. He's laying claim to us as the king. The king who saves our life forever. To repent, my friend, to repent is to travel to the cross and there see with sorrow your sins on Jesus, but also to travel away from the cross knowing, trusting with all of your heart that every one of those sins has been washed away. You know, later in Mark chapter 15, toward the end of this same chapter of the Bible we're in right now, there's a soldier, a centurion, and he's stationed at the foot of the cross. And as he witnesses the Lord Jesus giving up his last dying breath, that soldier stood there and said, surely this was the very Son of God. I have always hoped that that soldier was one of those other soldiers who had mocked him earlier because that would be one soldier who repented who changed his mind about Jesus when he heard and saw the gospel on the very cross that he was guarding. I don't know that for sure about that soldier, but this I do know. God has changed us by that cross. God has changed us And here's how. He made his claim to be our father by sending his son to be the king who gave his life as a sacrifice for us. Now, what are we going to do with that? Shall we ignore his claim on us? Shall we mock his claim on us? Shall we resent his claim on us? No way. Because that's just not who we are. May God grant to each one of you the, the, the strength, the grace, the courage to boast in Jesus' claim on you and to build your life on Jesus' love for you. Remember the purple of Lent. 
That's royalty. Divine royalty on the cross. And he inspires your repentance. Amen. Let us pray. Every wound that pains or grieves me by your wounds, Lord, is made whole. When I'm weak, your cross revives me, granting new life to the soul. Yes, your comfort renders sweet every bitter cup I meet. For your all-atoning passion has procured my soul's salvation. Amen. God bless you as you consider making an offering to St. Marcus Lutheran Church and more importantly, giving an offering to the Lord.
Join me in praying Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. Forgive me all my sins and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Thank you for being with us for worship tonight. The ministry team here at St. Marcus hopes that this service was a blessing to you and that you were able to worship the Lord your God at home. Purple is the color of royalty and you have got a king. His name is Jesus and the Bible says that he rules all things right now for the good of the church. May he be with you throughout this week. There will be other opportunities to worship with us beginning Saturday night at 5 o'clock, then Sunday morning at 10.30, and then again next Wednesday night at 6.30. God bless you as you worship the Lord. Thank you.